things. Also, afterwards, I believe there's some bread in the back. Yes, there is. That uh, he'll he'll let you know a little bit about. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad that you all came out today. It's a beautiful day. Well, it's not as beautiful as it has been. So it's a good day to learn about baking. Um, my name is Rob Beaton, as she just said. Um, I've got a degree in baking and science technology from K-State, and I've been a baker all my life. Since high school, I started at Yum Yum Donuts, and now I'm a teacher here at the Culinary Arts Program at Atlantic Union College. And I brought some magazines, if any of you are interested, it talks a little bit about the college. And we made the center fold here about a month or so ago. I guess it's actually closer to five months ago now. It was in November. And so, um, what we are trying to do is we are trying to debunk the lie, at least that's my personal mission, trying to debunk the lie that good food tastes bad. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> a lot of people out there think that the healthier the food is, the, the work batter it takes. Is there such a word as batter? <laughs> <laughs> Donut batter, pancake batter. But, um, and so likewise, on the reverse side of that, that the the worse it is for you, the better it tastes. <laughs> and Hardee's, how many of you have been to Hardee's Hamburgers? Out in the Midwest, Oklahoma, Kansas area, all through there. A few years back, they came up with like the monster burger. It was like the killer burger to kill all burgers. It had more calories and fat than a stick of butter. You could get less calories and less fat by eating a stick of butter. It touted like 1,470 calories over 110 grams of fat in this one burger. Three burgers, three slices of cheese, all kinds of mayonnaise and mustard and everything. They even packaged it in a cardboard coffin, kind of making mockery of people who eat healthfully. And so what happened to their, to, to their um, stocks went through the roof. Why? Because if it's that bad for you, it must taste really, really good. That's a lie. <laughs> and they're away from Worcester, about 15, 20 minutes away from Worcester. And you're vegan as opposed to vegetarian school? It's, it's touted as a vegan vegetarian school, but we haven't touched any eggs or milk or anything. It's all been um, vegan. So, yeah. So, um, before I go any further, I'd be i uh, remiss if I didn't ask the Lord's blessing on our meeting. you mind if I do that? Good. Let's, um, let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we know that in your word you said that you want us to live life and live it more abundantly. And so we ask for your blessings upon this meeting. Help us to learn the principles that you put into place thousands of years ago. And uh, we just ask for your guidance. Uh, we thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. For those of you who got... Uh, and then there's some others, there's, I just put in some other stuff that you probably like, sorbet, and, and there's a nice um, imitation Parmesan cheese in there that's called sesame sprinkle, that I think you'll be pleasantly surprised about, and uh, that's a really good one. Uh, so today is not about recipes. Recipes are really a dime a dozen. You can get recipes from Barnes and Nobles, you can go to the library, you can go on the internet, you can get millions of recipes. But I think that you all, most of you, probably realize that if you had a recipe and I had a recipe, there's a chance that yours may come out like a brick and mine may come out lofty and high. Do you, do you, do you agree with that? Yeah. And so we're going to be talking about why that happens. Why, why is it that if you're putting in the exact same ingredients that I'm putting in, but yours may not come out as big, as nice and lofty and soft as mine? flour like I normally like to do <laughs> and we'll be talking about soaking it and what I do by soaking it is I just put in my flour and my wet ingredients and I just put in two pounds of whole wheat flour you, you don't have this recipe but hopefully it's coming soon I emailed it and I don't know why it didn't get printed up but it didn't but it's coming I Okay, so in here, I'm going to just start this mixing. Can you all see what's happening down in my bowl? So, um, right now it's in the pickup stage, everything's 
kind of gooey and wet and next it's going to go into the cleanup stage and we'll talk about this a little later if I don't run out of time. Um, I've got a little bit of yeast here. This is instant dried yeast which we're going to be talking about in a little bit. Put it right in there. You notice I did not have to prehydrate that which is really nice and that's why I used instant dried yeast. I have to talk loud to talk about this mixer. Can you all hear me okay? Yeah. I've been told that I have a loud mouth. So usually I don't have to worry about that. Okay, so I have four ingredients in there so far. What are they? Does anybody know? I put in 1.2 pounds. I do everything by pounds. That's why I have a scale. But your, the recipe's coming. Okay, so you've been told that um, cornstarch and water can do it. I've tried it. I wasn't happy with the result. It got, um, I, got I saw the cornstarch after it baked, and it, 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 I could see the re residual cornstarch on there. I have not really felt anything, um, except for, if you want to shine, use steam in your oven. A lot of steam in your oven. Yeah. So what you do is, um, when you put this in the oven, you put your dinner rolls, bread, and pizza. Another challenge with this pizza is, is um, I could add a little bit of gluten because hand tossing it like that requires it to be a little stronger and the gluten is the strength of the flour and so I put in a little bit more gluten to uh, make it a little bit so it wouldn't tear as much. And then I bake that. Now what I do a lot with this is I will par bake it. And what I mean is I'm just going to put it in the oven long enough just to kill the yeast. And when it goes into the oven and, and it kills the yeast, then I take it out. It's not going to brown at all. And then I'm going to put it in a nice uh, plastic bag, put it in the freezer, and then I could do like 10 of those at a time, have it in the freezer. And when Junior comes home or the grandkids come over, I say, hey, you want pizza? Pull it right out, take out a can of pizza sauce, cut up some pepper, some onions, put on some mushrooms, some olives. You can even make a fancy one for breakfast and put some scrambled tofu in there and bake it in there. Oh. <laughs> And you can make New England pizza. Your own imagination is your own limitation when it comes to pizza, or for bread for that matter. So that you freeze it, and then you got it in the freezer, and you can make whatever you want whenever you want. And you just let it, you just bring it out. You don't even have to thaw it out. Put the pizza sauce on it, put on your toppings, put it in the oven, let your toppings brown. Voila, it's done. I'm done. <laughs> You're not here to endorse, but what do you like? I like whole. How much are you selling? 350. 350. So oh, you can't beat that. There are 20, 25 loaves. Somebody already grabbed theirs. And so if you want to have some, buy for yourself or something else, it's available. Another thing, you will notice that there's an evaluation sheet. Because we, we try, try to do this twice a year, it's good for us to know what you like, what you don't like, how we could make it better for you. And any suggestions, are, you know, we're open. So please fill that out. And then the last thing I would like to, to know is that he comes from Massachusetts. So there's gasoline costs involved, and he puts together everything. Even though we sponsor it, if you can help, that makes it easier for him to want to come back. So <laughs> we have a little donation jar there. I, you know, this is free, obviously. If you leave without having anything that you can give, we're not going to hold it against you. But if you wish to help out with expenses, we'll gladly take these in a little donation jar there at the entrance. So we thank you again for coming, and we hope that you enjoyed it, and there will be a taste of some of the bread in there for you to take before you. Thank you so much. It started, I have in here some butter that's melting. I don't know if you Vegan cheesecake. Okay? Mm -hmm. okay. And that's pretty much melted. Um, so what I have in here in my bowl is I got about 10 rectangle squares of graham crackers. And what mm. I did is I went ahead and got 100% whole wheat graham crackers mm. just to give it some um, nutritional value in the cheesecake. 
And then, so what you do to that is you want to add a third of a cup of sugar and your graham crackers. Now you can get graham cracker meal that, that's out there. Um, what you want to do is you want to take your graham crackers, break them up, um, either using your hands inside of a bowl, or you can put them in a Ziploc bag, take a, uh, um, a hammer, and just bang it out. Good way to get aggression out at the end of the day once you get home from work. So once you get all that in there, you go ahead and put your sugar in there. Now I've got about a quarter cup of butter. I'm just butter? Gonna, yeah. I've got um, Earth Balance. But it's vegan. Earth Balance is vegan. Yes. Earth Balance is vegan as well as a Oh, okay. Balance. Earth Balance. All right. Um, be careful though, because they both have products that do contain whey in them, which is a milk product. So you want to make sure you read your labels. Not all strong balance has whey. Not all strong balance has whey. You have to read. Right. Some does and some does not. Right. What kind of sugar are you using? I have sugar in the raw. What I'm using. What about sucanat? What you can that? use sucanat. You can use um, Florida crystals as well. <laughs> so with the butter, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're able to bring it together and it forms a ball. If it doesn't form a ball, then you just want to go ahead and add a little bit more melted butter. And um, I would add about a tablespoon of butter at a time, just so that you don't add too much butter in there. That's earthbound butter. See, once you get that done, you want to get your spring form pan about 10 inches. And then you go ahead and you can take your... This butter, sugar, and graham cracker. Your graham cracker mixture. And just want to, you just want to press down. Anyone see that? Mm -hmm. And once you get a nice crust on the bottom, everything's pretty much together. You can add any types of fruits you want. Here I have uh, wild blueberries, mm -hmm. main wild blueberries. Oh. You can go ahead and sprinkle it on the bottom. You can add strawberries. Um, you basically want to work with what's in season. That way you have fresh product to work with. Um, you can certainly add any type of frozen product you like. Um, I found out that blueberries are one of my favorites. So I just want to put blueberries on the recipe. Now what I have here is uh, tofuti better than cream cheese. It's dairy free. Um, there's also two different types of tofuti cream cheese. One has a hydrogenated oil in them. and The other one does not have hydrogenated. So again, you want to make sure you go ahead and you read your labels. And you want four eight ounce tubs for this particular recipe. You have to get that at a health food stores? Yes. Um, I'm not sure if Hannaford's carries it here. I know um, the Hannafords where I live in South Lancaster, Massachusetts, they carry the tofu and cream cheese um, because the college is right down the street. They like to um, compete with uh, the local ABC that sells all sorts of healthy ingredients. So they try and carry the same amount of ingredients that the local health food store does, but um, it's a little more expensive. I think the other ingredients just arrived. <laughs> <laughs> really? Now, if you don't have a mixing bowl at home, you can certainly put it, put this in the bowl. Use a wooden spoon. Any type of spoon that you have in the kitchen will work just fine. Um, what, you want, what you would want to do if you're mixing it by hand is let the cream cheese come to room temperature first. That way, it's easier for you to work with if you don't have a machine at home to use. It'll be a lot easier on your hands. And again, I have um, sugar in the raw. And what you want to do is you want to cream the mixture. And by creaming it, you just want to incorporate the mixture into the cream cheese. And you want to get a nice, smooth consistency out of it. Now at this point, you want to Bring the mixture bowl back down, and you want to scrape the sides because 
So you'll get food that gets stuck to the sides of the bowl and it won't incorporate. You want to make sure you get down to the bottom of the bowl as well because the paddle doesn't quite reach all the way to the bottom. Do we have and then you can go ahead and mix that. Now what I have to replace the egg in my recipe is I have a slurry. And what a slurry is, is just um, usually it's equal parts of cornstarch to water. And that would equal one egg. So if you have a recipe that you want to convert into a vegan recipe, what you want to do is one option is one, one tablespoon of cornstarch to one tablespoon of water. Create yourself a slurry, mix the two ingredients together. You've got a slurry, and that'll replace one egg in the recipe. So for this recipe, I've got um, quarter cups of water to three tablespoons of cornstarch. And this is not going to add any flavor to my cream cheese, um, which is another thing I wanted to bring up. Um, a half of mashed banana will also mm. equal one egg. So if you're making muffins and it calls for an egg, throw in a you want to add some flavor from a banana, you can go ahead and add a half a banana mashed. Um, somebody brought up um, flaxseed. Yeah. Now for the flaxseed, you want two tablespoons of flaxseed powder to three tablespoons of water. And that'll give you the ratio for one egg. Yeah. So I'm just, I just created my slurry. I mixed the two ingredients together. I just want to go ahead and add that into my mixing bowl. And that'll give you my liquid that I need um, that will come from that egg. Make sure I get all that in there. Another one is you can use a quarter cup of silken tofu. And that'll give you, as well, one egg. How much did you say? A quarter cup of silken tofu. There's all sorts of tofu out there. They're soft. There's firm, there's extra firm, and there's silken. Silken is good when, for when you're making smoothies. You want to add a, li a little extra protein to your smoothie. You go ahead, add just some silken tofu in the smoothie. You get some more protein that way. Um, if you're looking to add more omega-3s into your diet, use the flaxseed. You can buy whole flaxseed. What you do is I keep it in the freezer. And then what I do is I put it in my blender at home. I blend it to make a powder, and I sprinkle. I take some flaxseed, I make a parfait with some silk yogurt, a granola mixture, and I sprinkle some flaxseed right on top of that. Just to give it a little more flavor. It sounds and again, good. It incorporates that omega-3 that um, people are always asking for in a vegan diet. Where do you get your omega-3 since you don't eat fish? Well, flaxseed, flaxseed oil, flaxseed powder, um, so those are a couple ways you can do it. You can certainly use flaxseed oil to replace olive oil when you sauteing any type of vegetables or uh, anything like that. Just make sure you keep it at a low heat because flaxseed oil does not have a high smoking point. because it'll hold, it won't break down at a high temperature. Did you say grape? Grapeseed grape. oil. Grapeseed oil with a G. Yes. Did you ever hear that? Yes. Sure, I've got some at home. Yeah. yeah. Good. So now with that quarter cup of water, I've got here a nice mixture. Can anyone see that in the mirror? Oh, yeah. And that's basically, now, you can pour that right into your, your mixture here. No, I see it. Oh, beautiful. You want to make sure you use all the sugar in this recipe. I tried coming back on the sugar. Um, but it really doesn't give you a sweet product in the end. It leaves a, a, a sour aftertaste because of the cream cheese itself is pretty sour. Um, so by, add, by adding all that sugar into your recipe, you'll get a nice, sweet um, vegan cheesecake. Now you can certainly cut back on the sugar for the graham crackers, because graham crackers alone, mm -hmm. they come. 
with sugar. So now you just want to make sure that you got a nice even spread across the entire pan. Also, um, a couple other variations that you can do. One is you can take some melted chocolate. Um, just make sure you read the label. There's 100% dark chocolate that's vegan. And um, what you can do is melt it in a double boiler. Double boiler. And what you do is you take a pot of water, bring it up to a boil, put your chocolate in a stainless steel bowl, put it over the pot of warm water, melt some chocolate, and then with a toothpick, you can just kind of swirl in some chocolate. You can do that with strawberries, um, some kind of jelly, whatever you like. So then this, this goes into an oven at 350 degrees for about oh one hour. Stick it back in the oven, and that'll prevent the top from burning. Um, but sometimes, as you can see right here, some of that top peeled away when I took the foil off. Um, you just want to make sure that you tighten up the foil and uh, push it away against the sides, and that should prevent it from sticking on the cream cheese itself. And then before taking it out, you want to take a paring knife, which is this guy here, or your smallest knife, kitchen knife will do fine. I like to go around the edges just to make sure that it's not stuck before I um, release the pan. You want to make sure you let it cool for at least an hour and then refrigerate it. Because you'll find out that once you take it out of the oven, you shake it and it's still going to be pretty uh, moist in the center and it will jiggle on you, but that's okay. This one, once it sets and cools, it will not, it'll set. It, won't, it should jiggle at all. So keep that in mind when you take it out of the oven. If you notice that it um, hasn't set, it will set once you put it in the fridge. Okay, there you have it. You've got your crust on the bottom, and then you can see little bits of blueberry on the bottom. And it should taste really good. It looks lovely. And we'll taste that um, at the end. Boy, that looks good. Vegan cheesecake. Now when I make scrambled tofu, I add a little bit of turmeric, and that gives it a nice yellow color. And that also kind of gives it the yellow That's tofu. Of the Some people don't like the flavor of turmeric. It's a really smoky flavor. Um, you want to be careful not to add too much. All you're doing is adding the turmeric for color and not flavor. That's good. It is? Yeah. <laughs> Good to get that one. Yeah. yeah. So, it's just raw tofu. Just break. crumble it up, <laughs> take it out of the package. If you find out that your tofu is um, has a lot of water, take the tofu out, um, place it in the colander, if you've got a colander at home, put a piece of towel or paper towel on top, and then you can put a, a can of soup or a can of beans, whatever you have at home, place it right on top of the tofu, and just let the weight of the can drain the tofu itself. And the tofu should be nice and dry for you to eat raw. Another way, if you're not watching salt intake, you can go ahead and sprinkle some salt. And that salt will help release the moisture that's trapped in the tofu. So in here, what I have is nutritional yeast. Mm -hmm. um, one tablespoon of nutritional yeast. Mm -hmm. Three tablespoons of McKay's chicken seasoning. Now again, the McKay's chicken seasoning, there's two different types. One contains MSG and whey. There's another McKay's chicken seasoning that doesn't contain either one of them. And then I have a teaspoon of garlic powder and a teaspoon of onion powder. And about an eighth of a teaspoon of turmeric. Could you give the uh, nutritional yeast amount? One tablespoon. One tablespoon. Yeah. And then how much for the chicken seasoning? Three tablespoons. Thanks. And that's another question that um, being vegan is, how do you get your B12? Because you, you can only find B12 in meat. Well, um, Red Star Nutritional Yeast is the only nutritional yeast that's certified 
to have vitamin B12 in it. When you buy nutritional yeast in bulk from a health food store, or what brand is that? Because it, it doesn't tell you. Depends where you get it from. Bulk. Depends where you get it from. Um, if it's an ABC, ABC. What if it's a mother Earth? You don't know. There's no ABC around here. Um, you'll have to ask them, and they have the ingredients that come in their package because they probably get 50 pounds worth, and then they bring it down from there. You can buy it in a can. They'll tell you what it is. Yeah. Again, you just want to make sure you read the labels because all nutritional yeast will have B vitamins in it. Maud bought us three, um, three pounds, one, nineteen dollars. Red Star will carry the B12. So once you get that mixed in there, you want to add about half a cup of veginase. Veginase. Yeah, instead of mayonnaise. And that'll replace the mayonnaise. There's also another one called mayonnaise. It's yes. vegan. With an N. With an N. I don't normally work with that one. I usually just work with the veginase. Can you get that at Hannaford? Hmm? Can you get that at Hannaford? I don't know. I don't do my shopping there as a rule. I don't know if you're in town. Oh, okay. Would those recipes come in? Would those recipes come in? Would those recipes come in? Okay, and that's, that's it. Mm. That's basically the and then you can make sandwiches for a picnic. Yeah. How long is that good for in the refrigerator? This is good for about seven days. Yeah. You can certainly freeze it. But once you freeze tofu, it changes its texture. No. Bread that were just done by Chef Beaton, the first, after the first class. So we have them, five of them available for 350 that he brought. Mm -hmm. So you may want to go right there after the class and see if you want to buy one of them. Water, just waiting for it to come up to a boil. Pasta um, salad. Yeah. You get some whole wheat rotini. Um, this recipe calls for one pound. Each box is usually a pound at the store. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use one pound. It'll cook faster. Now if you want, you can go ahead and add some salt to this water. That'll help the water um, boil at a higher temperature than just boiling temperature. And that'll, make, that'll cook your pasta a little faster. As well as you can put a lid on your pot I'll help bring up the temperature a little faster as well. So while that's cooking, we're going to go ahead and put the vinaigrette together. And for the vinaigrette, it's um, what you have here is some olive oil and there's the balsamic. Put the balsamic vinegar and some balsamic vinegar. And what that's going to do is that's you have uh, two unmixable liquids. So what you want to do is you want to emulsify those two liquids to bring them together. And how you do that is you want to add your balsamic vinegar in to your bowl. And we're going to put about two tablespoons in there. 